Juan Jose Calandria was born in Cantalones, Uruguay. Upon graduating from school, he pursued his studies with an architectural career in mind. He became so interested in sculpture, however, that he soon devoted his entire time to studies in that field. By the time he was 18, Calandria had won a one-man show with ensuing honors and commissions. At this time, he also won the most important art scholarship offered in Uruguay, a four-year period of study abroad. When it was decided he was too young to accept this honor, he was not discouraged. He continued his studies and won the award again when he was 22. He won his first gold medal and a grand prize at a major exposition in Catalonia's Uruguay. After extensive travels in Europe, Calandria settled in Paris, where he stayed for the next 14 years, working under the guidance of Bordel, Despio, and Gimont. He soon became Gimont's assistant at the Academy Colorassi and also held classes in his own studio. By 1939, his work was well known and admired in Paris, where he exhibited in many galleries, the Salon des Tuileries in Printemps, and the Exposition of Contemporary Artists, the latter a great honor. Calandria was awarded the gold medal at the Paris World's Fair this time. Several of his sculptures were on exhibit at the Uruguayan Pavilion. War was declared while Calandria was vacationing in Greece. He sailed at once for New York, spending nearly a year there and exhibiting several times. Thereafter, he went back to Uruguay, and in 1941 was appointed consul to New Orleans. He was married that same year in New York to Chalice Walker and moved to the south where the Calandrias have lived ever since. Calandria has exhibited his paintings and sculpture in New Orleans and out of state as well. This includes New York, Nebraska, Texas, Georgia, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Tennessee. When he retired from consular duties in 1958, he was then free to give all of his time to his art, which flourished both in quality and success. At about the same time, his work became increasingly abstract and remained so during his lifetime. He taught sculpture in Paris, drawing at the Arts and Crafts Club during the war in New Orleans, and held classes in painting and sculpture for adults and children in his Pontalbo studio in the French Quarter. Later, he held classes in sculpture for several years in the Calandria School of Painting and Sculpture, located at Gallier Hall, and thereafter in his Jefferson Avenue studio located in Uptown New Orleans. He also gave lectures and demonstrations many times in the New Orleans area. His exhibition at the Trademark was his last large major exhibition. Plagued with arthritis, he nevertheless continued to work on his knees, as any other position was impossible. Forced to stop sculpture, he continued to paint prolifically and was more than prepared for another large one-man show. However, in 1978, a new illness set in. Another large exhibition would have been too difficult, and during the last two years of his life, he stopped painting altogether. He was the first New Orleans artist to have his work, in this case a sculpture, purchased for the New Orleans Museum of Art's permanent collection. said, art like sin occurs, but art is not revealed, which is why I am noting a few recipes for the work involved in art. These recipes are the fruit of long experience, and they are applicable to all the methods claiming the collaboration of the spirit in all diverse forms. Archimedes said, give me where to stand and I will move the earth. He had great faith in the power 
and today we know that this was with reference to the lever. The Greeks, with their well-balanced genius, knew that the essential in creation of a work of art is to go straight in pursuit of their aim, letting nothing distract in order to arrive at the designated goal. In effect, it is known that the method is none other than the application of the spirit to the cause, a concentration of the forces of intelligence over the problem at hand. The essential thing is to maintain vigor and persistence in the effort. Nothing is easy, yet everything can become easy. Naturally, it would be useless to apply such an effort if one did not possess natural genius, nor does one become a great artist by working 10 hours daily. Talent without working is nothing.